He was once one of the most highly touted cornerbacks in all of college football. He was entering his senior season at USC and was just named a team captain. Then, all of a sudden, one major lie completely ruined his life and really any solid chance of having an NFL career. Today, we're going to be diving into this crazy story involving Josh Shaw and a lie that was heard around the world. Before we get to today's video, make sure you smash that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. I post a lot of great college football content here, so if you're a college football fan, this is definitely the place for you. Before we get to the crazy story of Josh Shaw, let's go back to his high school days. He went to high school at Palmdale High in California and was one of the top recruits in the entire country. Country. He was a four-star cornerback and was rated as the number 28 overall recruit in the nation and the number four recruit in California. During his senior season, he was named an Under Armour All-American along with a number of high prestigious honors. He really did it all in high school as he played cornerback, quarterback, running back, and wide receiver. He had 50 tackles, two fumble recoveries, two block field goals, and an interception in 2009 on defense, as well as throwing for 2,300 yards with 18 passing touchdowns and rushing for 921 yards with 14 rushing touchdowns. In November of 2009, Shaw announced that he was going to commit to the Florida Gators. He also received scholarship offers from other top programs, including Ohio State, LSU, and his hometown Trojans. USC talked to me several times during the day, and they said they still plan to recruit me, but I'm solid with Florida. I'm a man of my word, and this wasn't a spur-of-the-moment decision for me. I thought a lot about this, and Florida is just the best fit for me. I love watching Florida play. They have so many athletes and play fast and aggressive. They play a lot of true freshmen at Florida, and Joe Hayden and Janoris Jenkins were both freshman starters at corner. Both are probably going to be first-round draft picks too, so that was a pretty big selling point. Shaw appeared in 10 games as a freshman for the Gators. He racked up 22 tackles, with one coming for a loss. He also had a pass deflection. Now, not awful numbers whatsoever for a true freshman, lining up at cornerback in the SEC. However, his time in Florida would be short-lived as he decided he wanted to go back home and transfer to USC. Shaw was granted immediate eligibility and suited up for the Trojans in 2012. He began the season as a strong safety, but was moved to cornerback mid-season and ended up starting there. He also played on special teams. He was granted a hardship waiver by the NCAA to allow him to be eligible to compete in 2012 without having to sit out a year after transferring. Overall, in 2012, he appeared in all 13 games, racking up 30 tackles with two for loss, including six pass deflections and two interceptions. Shaw started both the cornerback and free safety as a junior in 2013, although he primarily was used at corner. Overall in 2013, he started all 14 games, racking up 67 tackles with five and a half coming for loss. He also had four interceptions with one being returned for a touchdown to go along with seven pass deflections. Plus, he also returned a block punt for a touchdown. He made 2013 all Pac-12 honorable mention and was a field steal all Pac-12 third team. He was named USC's defensive perimeter player of the year. Shaw Shaw was named a captain entering the senior season and looked to be a standout player on defense for USC. It was supposed to be a huge season for him as he looked to improve his draft stock for the upcoming NFL draft. Then, in August of 2014, just a week before the season opener, everything completely changed. Prior to the start of the 2014 season, it was announced that Shaw would be missing significant time due to ankle injuries he suffered while rescuing a relative in a swimming pool. The LA Times reported that Josh Shaw suffered two high ankle sprains after he leaped from a second-story balcony to come to the aid of a seven-year-old nephew who couldn't swim. Shaw, who was attending a family function in an apartment in Palmdale, landed on concrete and then crawled into the pool to assist his nephew. I would do it again for whatever kid it was. It did not have to be my nephew. My ankles really hurt, but I am lucky to be surrounded by the best trainers and doctors in the world. I am taking my rehab one day at a time, and I hope to be back on the field as soon as possible. Shaw's father said he wasn't at the function, but was not surprised by his son's actions. That's Josh for you. That's about all you need to know about him. That was a heroic act by Josh, putting his personal safety aside, head coach Steve Sarkeesian told reporters, but that's the kind of person he is. It's unfortunate that he'll be sidelined for a while and we will miss his leadership and play, but I know he'll be working hard to get back on the field as soon as possible. Just like that, Josh Shaw became a household name. He was a hero. This was a standout college football player with a bright NFL future ahead that risked everything by jumping off a balcony to save his drowning nephew. It was an amazing and heartfelt story that definitely likely was going to earn him some bonus points come NFL draft season. But then, just a few days later, the story took an absolutely crazy turn. Earlier this week, he was hailed a hero. This morning, he is being called a liar. Shaw now says the elaborate and daring rescue of a seven-year-old nephew was a complete 
fabrication. In the story of USC football players' supposed act of heroism, Josh Shaw just admitted he lied about saving his nephew from drowning as the reason behind his injured ankles. The University of Southern California tonight confirms it has launched its own investigation into one of its star athletes, Josh Shaw. USC has suspended football co-captain Josh Shaw indefinitely. The move comes after he admitted today he lied to his teammates and coaches all to cover up the real reason he was seriously hurt off the field. Why would you concoct such an outrageously self-serving heroic lie? Lie. Why would you do that? Later that week, Shaw admitted that his story was false and that he made everything up. The story of his supposed rescue, which was posted Monday on the university's football website, gained national attention. Almost immediately, the story began to unravel when head coach Steve Sarkeesian revealed after practice Tuesday morning the university officials had received phone calls contradicting Shaw's account of the story. Now, Shaw was injured Saturday night when he fell from a third floor balcony at an apartment building in downtown LA. That part was right. But how exactly he fell? That's when we get to the crazy story. Los Angeles police detectives were investigating a burglary at the apartment unit where Shaw fell. The police responded late Saturday night to a call of a woman screaming. No one answered the door of the apartment, so the officers forced their way in but found the unit empty. A neighbor told the police that a man had run across a balcony. When a woman living in the apartment complex was given a description of the man, she told them it sounded like her boyfriend, Josh Shaw. Through the first few days, Shaw stood by his story but watched as it became national news. He finally confessed the lie to university officials after they had been alerted Shaw had jumped off his balcony after a loud argument with his longtime girlfriend. That argument resulted in a neighbor calling police, who opened a domestic violence investigation. On August 23rd, after the annual Salute to Troy barbecue on campus, one week before the season opener against Fresno State, Shaw went home to meet his girlfriend, whom he had dated for more than seven years. They started arguing, and she ran out of the apartment and disappeared down the hall. Shaw remained in the apartment until he heard noise below his balcony. He walked outside to see police cars pulling up on the street. Shaw said that there was nothing physical or anything from the argument, so he was shocked to see police cars showing up. Here's what he told to the LA Times about that night. We were not on good terms when she left. I thought she had somebody call the authorities. I was thinking the worst. If she did say anything, I'm a black man with dreadlocks and with everything going on in the country at the time, all that stuff in St. Louis, in my mind, I'm gonna leave from the balcony so authorities did not see me. Shaw said he jumped from the balcony to a grassy area on Figueroa Street where he landed on his feet. He was wearing only flip-flops. He said that the pain immediately shot up from his ankles to his knees and that he was certain he had broken both legs. He said he crawled up Figueroa Street at sunset where he called his brother Justin for help. Josh was taken to Justin's San Fernando Valley home where his brother carried him upstairs on his back. He said he couldn't go to the hospital because he didn't know how he could tell USC about how he got these potentially season-ending injuries. He said that he was in excruciating pain but he thought to himself, how do I explain to my coaches this that as a senior captain I just shattered both of my legs. He said he called USC officials Sunday morning but only after he had a plan. He said that he wanted to come up with something that they would say, Josh, if you got hurt, that's a good reason to get hurt. And that's where the lie came in. He said that he came up with a story that he had injured himself attempting to save his seven-year-old nephew from drowning in an apartment pool at a family function in Palmdale. He thought it was a good and believable story. I didn't think it could be proved that the story wasn't true. My sister was having a party. My cousin does have a balcony over his pool. It involved only myself, my sister, two or three little kids, and my cousin. Shaw said that he was confident the story would be good to go and he could get away with it. And so Sunday morning, he relayed it to USC officials who ordered him to visit to the hospital for x-rays. When he found out his legs weren't broken, he said he began regretting his plan. He said that if he had known he'd only end up with high ankle sprains, he never would have made up the lie to hide it. Though he made up the story, Shaw wasn't intending on it becoming national news. He didn't make it up to become a hero or anything like that. He didn't want this to go viral. He just thought the coaches would say okay, and he'd deal with the problem on his own. He first realized it might be bigger Monday morning when he was approached by USC's longtime sports information director, Tim Tessalone, who he said told him they needed to get ahead of the story before Shaw was seen in a wheelchair at Tuesday's practice. Shaw asked them twice if they could release the injury as an undisclosed injury, but both times, the answer was no. He explained why Shaw's story would have been difficult to hide. He said that being carted around campus in a wheelchair would be tough for people just to ignore, saying that although it was a feel-good story, he knew it would become a news story quite quickly. USC officials had no reason not to believe Shaw. I mean, why would they think he was lying? He had no instances prior that would lead him to think that, and it was a really believable story. On Monday, the story was published on the school website. Shaw said that he was asked for final approval of the story, but said it was released before he could even see it. He said he couldn't promise if he would have changed anything, but he said maybe seeing it on a computer screen would have given him second thoughts. 
However, he still didn't think it'd go viral, and he thought he'd be fine. Later that night, Shaw saw his story on ESPN. That's when he knew things would be a problem. Shaw said that he kept his story going because he was overcome by fear, especially with how big the story had all of a sudden become. He was scared of the whole country thinking he was a liar, and scared of letting down all the people that sent him texts and phone calls. But most importantly, he was scared of ruining his image with his coaches and his teammates. Things got much worse the following day. As Shaw was about to be wheeled out to meet media at practice, USC officials had started hearing some stories from police and other sources about an incident Saturday at the apartment building. Before taking the field, Shaw was asked directly by coach Steve Sarkeesian whether the story was true. Instead of avoiding conflict and telling his coach the truth, Shaw decided to lie. At that point, Tessalone told Shaw that the news conference was going to be postponed until they could confirm the truth of the story. Even still, Shaw stood by his story. He said that it was getting even harder and harder to keep up with lie after lie after lie. He said that the timeline wasn't right and everything was off, but he was still lying. He thought he was in way too deep. By Tuesday night, even his sister had appeared on local TV to support his story. At that point, the media speculation had grown so great, Shaw gathered his family at a hotel where he finally told his parents the truth. My biggest mistake wasn't jumping from the balcony. It was in not calling my father after I did. I would not be sitting with you today if I did so. I tried to keep it from my father, and I will regret that to the day I die. Shaw said that his father would have immediately set him straight. He said that his father is someone with wisdom and would have made him call Sark that night. On Wednesday morning, after three days of all the lies, in a meeting with USC officials, Shaw finally told the truth. He was suspended by the Trojans immediately. Here's what USC head football coach Steve Sarkeesian said in a written statement. We are extremely disappointed in Josh. He let us all down. As I have said, nothing in his background led us to doubt him when he told us of the injuries, nor did anything after our initial vetting of the story. I appreciate that Josh has now admitted that he lied and has apologized. Although this type of behavior is out of character for Josh, it's unacceptable. Honesty and integrity must be at the center of our program. I believe Josh will learn from this. I hope that he will not be defined by this incident and that the Trojan family will accept his apology and support him. Had this incident not gone down, Josh Shaw likely would have been one of the top cornerbacks taken in the 2015 NFL Draft. He likely would have been a first rounder or at least a second rounder. Instead, he wasn't drafted until the fourth round when he was taken with the 120th pick by the Cincinnati Bengals. He played in 15 games his rookie year, racking up 15 tackles and one pass deflection. During the season opener against the New York Jets in 2016, Shaw made a game-sealing interception, and it was his first and only interception of his career. On September 1st of 2018, he was placed on injured reserve and was released by the Bengals a few days later. On October 2nd of 2018, he was signed by the Kansas City Chiefs. His time there was short-lived as he was waived a month later. Just three days after being waived, he was signed by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. In March of 2019, he signed a one-year contract with the Arizona Cardinals. He was placed on the injured reserve with a shoulder injury on August 25th of 2019. Later that year, his name was in the national news yet again, and for the second time, it wasn't for a good reason. They have one of its players being disciplined for gambling for the first time in the last 23 years. The NFL has suspended Arizona Cardinals defensive back Josh Shaw at least through all of next season bet for betting on games on multiple occasions this season. He was suspended indefinitely for the remainder of the 2019 season and at least through the 2020 season for betting on NFL games. Shaw, who had been on the injured reserve since August, was accused by the league of placing bets on games on multiple occasions. As you can expect, it's against league rules for any NFL employee to bet on any NFL games or to set foot in a sportsbook at any point during the NFL season. Not only did he bet, he bet on the Arizona Cardinals on a three-team parlay. He made the bet on Sunday, November 10th at a Caesars Sportsbook in Las Vegas. The bet was on the second halves of three Week 10 games and included the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who were leading the Cardinals 17-13 at halftime. The Buccaneers were one-point favorites for the second half. They failed to cover the second half spread, but went on to defeat the Cardinals 30-27. And in case you're wondering, Josh Shaw's three-team parlay? It lost. The NFL announced that Josh Shaw would be suspended through at least the 2020 season. The league said its investigation found no evidence that Shaw used inside information to make his bets nor that any games were compromised. Parlay bets, because they require multiple correct picks, typically have not been associated with point shaving or game fixing schemes in recent past. Shaw, who was out with a shoulder injury, had not been around the Cardinals all season. Adam Schefter reported that Arizona was not aware that the NFL was investigating one of their own players before the announcement went public, which was preceded by a league-wide memo emphasizing the gambling policy and penalties for violating it. Caesars contacted the Nevada Gaming Control Board on November 10th and then the NFL shortly after discovering Josh Shaw had placed the wager. Shaw was open about his line of work when filling out his application for a betting account with Caesars, even listing professional football player as his occupation. 
participation. In December of 2019, Shaw announced that he was no longer appealing his suspension for violating the NFL's gambling policy. He's eligible to petition for reinstatement on or after February 15th of 2021. Although he can still be reinstated and make a return to the NFL, my guess is that Josh Shaw has played his final snap in the league. He was a young prospect with so much talent and promise, but one lie completely changed everything. Even after he was given a second chance to redeem himself, he threw it all away. So, after hearing his crazy story, what are your thoughts on Josh Shaw? Drop a comment down below. If there are any other crazy stories of former college football players you'd like to see a video on, drop a comment down below and let me know. If you guys could please take a second and give this video a thumbs up, I would greatly appreciate it. These videos take a lot of time to make, and one thumbs up can help share this video with more college football fans. If you haven't done so yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. If you're a college football fan, this is definitely the place for you. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.